Well, let us be one of the first to say Happy New Year. Good morning. You've probably had a New Year's greeting uh, prior to this, but we want to jump in there right away. Welcome to the New Year 2022. Back with your garden buddies. Everything seems to be rolling. I'm Brian Maine, Tiger Palafox, the Hall of Famer, John Begnasco. We trust you had a great Christmas. Happy holidays. We took three weeks off, guys. I, I feel like um, the, the Tin Woodsman in the Wizard of Oz. I, I need an oil can. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, three I'm weeks squeaking. off, but it was quite an adventure, right? It was an, We all had adventures. John went to Idaho. Yeah. My wife and I attempted to go to Wyoming. We yeah. turned around about 200 miles from our destination and said, you got to go home. The weather's too bad. The freeways and highways are closed. You were driving. You, didn't, you did not fly, right? Did not fly, but right. I will never do that again. In the winter, at least. I will always fly. How long did it take you to get to where you had to turn around? We were making great time. Two days. Two days. So the first day we left San Diego, we got as far as Beaver, Utah. The next day we got as far as Rock Springs, Wyoming, which is where they said, you're not going any further. Both east and west closed. And they said, there's a storm coming in, so if that storm comes in and you're still here, you'll be here for three, four, five days. Jeez. So as soon as any, any road opens, east or west, if it does, get out. Oh, my goodness. We got out, had to turn around, come back home. Jeez. That was our Christmas. We never saw our son or his <laughs> wife. But we're going to go back in uh, spring, early summer, and definitely fly. Yeah, definitely yeah. things change, right, when there's no snow out there. You know, I, I think we should have known better, but we, we didn't. And there were no signs leading up to the closure. You'd think at least 100 miles away they would say something. No, they wait till it's right there. You don't know <laughs> till you get there. <laughs> Hundreds of trucks on both sides pulled over. Wow. And John went to Idaho but had a, had a, a much different experience. Different. Well, it was different. Different. He in actually that made you, it. Got, you got to your he destination. Made it. Got to where I was going. Yeah, we had a good time. We celebrated uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving at the same time because my family now lives, my kids now live in Fallbrook, uh, Idaho. Meridian, Idaho, and Indianapolis. <laughs> wow. So we all got together at my daughter's in Idaho, and, and it was great. And you know what? I got to go to some garden centers my daughter knows how to keep me happy yeah right so she brought me to some garden centers and and i was just it was interesting to see how they do business in the winter because they all have to have greenhouses right i was gonna say it's shocking to know that they were open oh yeah you know. and busy were they selling the thing that uh surprised me the most and we're going to talk about it later was the price of house plants oh, i mean when you're talking like almost 25 dollars for a four inch pot but you just also hinted on it, the fact that they have to keep it in a greenhouse right? where it's heated, there's lights, there's all of that just to keep that plant alive. Yeah, we talked it also, about the price also, of plants going up. Yeah, it yeah. also reminded me how far I, away I've been from the house plant sales yeah. and industry because I don't have any house plants really. Yep. And even though I wrote a book on house plants years ago, but I'm, in my mind, I'm still thinking four inch plants are a buck ninety nine. Yeah, that, that, yeah <laughs> you're talking. The last time you wrote that book was what seventy seven, nineteen seventy seven. I remember exactly, when I yeah. used to buy gas and it was a nickel. Twenty nine <laughs> cents a gallon. Is what I remember. <laughs> ninety nine cents was my cheapest gas ever. Yeah. Well, those days are gone. Yeah, they are. But um, but yeah, so. The, but you brought in some cool house plants that we'll talk about in a little bit for sure. Because yeah, house yeah, a lot plants of plants are crazy. in the studio today. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Tiger brought in something I've never seen before. The arbutus. Right. Yeah, that's one. So so the we're talking about a, a an arbutus, a variegated um, a strawberry tree, and it's a big bush. It's got variegated foliage, but the strawberry trees are known for two things. One is the red stem branches bark very beautiful structure of the bush itself and then the next thing is they they get these berries that are yellow to red fruit um about the size of a cherry huh john um and, yeah you know and they it get looks these... like a covid cherry <laughs> it, looks, it does look because yeah. it's spiky like that it's right. so true <laughs> Um, but that's a fruit, and they call that a strawberry. Um, that's the strawberry tree where they get its name from. But this one's variegated foliage, and this is an attempt for the listeners that have been following the show for a while. We talked about John, how he planted uh, California lilac on a hillside. Actually, my son did. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not me. Yeah, his Give son credit credit is due. planted right. the California lilac on a hillside. And, you know, the one thing I found and he learned was that when you water plants 
uh, like that that are kind of drought tolerant native species. They and if you water them in the summer, that tends to make them die. Right. And I did that with my strawberry tree this past year. Um, and so this is the replacement. This is round two. Now, is this strawberry tree the Arbutus unido or the Arbutus menziae? It's the unido. Okay. So yeah. So it's a um, you know that um, this one's the also part of that compact family because ah. there's like the Arbutus unido compacta right. unido. Then there's the marina and all those other ones. Right. But, yeah, this one's part of that. Like, It's not – Marina is the men mensi, right? right? Exactly. You know what's interesting? I have, for some reason, closed caption on this computer oh, yeah? of our dialogue is back and forth. Pretty and it's pretty good? It's interesting to see when you're talking about these flowers, the oh, pronunciations the and the names, what they come up with here, coming as close as they can. Do you have that on your computer? You know, that's no, weird because it. my computer started showing that all of a sudden, and it was distracting. Fortunately, I found the button to push to turn it off. Yeah. But uh, your, whatever you were saying was coming across perfectly <laughs> yeah, I, because bet, you enunciate. I'll bet it was. Because you're a professional. Enunciation. Right. <laughs> it's important. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. The chic sixth sheep is sick. <laughs> that's all. That's all like, oh, uh, black bug's blood. What about Theophilus thistle, the thistle sifter? See, look at you. You're good. Well, wow. sifting thousands of thistles, thrice thrust through the thick of his thumb, three thistles. And boy, on closed caption, that's interesting yeah. to, to read that. <laughs> it just started because Because I don't enunciate language. like you What do. was the other one that we used to do? Oh, seashell, right? Yeah, she sells. Seashell, seashells by the seashore. Right. She sells seashells by the seashore. How Hardest many seashells shall she sell? Hardest one for me was always toy boat. That toy was boat, my toy heart. boat. Yeah. Red toy, yellow toy. Well, red toy, yellow toy, it's not hard to say. If you say it 10 times, go ahead, quickly. <laughs> no, you know, this is a gardening show. <laughs> well, I like You're getting us off. way off track. Way off track. <laughs> hey, uh, hey I, wanted way, to... go, I wanted to just make those on BizTalk Radio. Of course, this is last week's show. Yes. We'll get into that later on, but welcome right. to the BizTalk Radio Nation. Okay, and I wanted to let our listeners on Facebook uh, know what it is we're doing today. Today, we're not having a guest. We've been gone for three weeks. And we thought it would be good to come back and just interact with our listeners. Yes. And we want to hear your New Year's resolutions, gardening resolutions. Yes. Yeah. Those on Facebook Live, right. interact. Don't Let really us know care what's that going much on. about your personal life. <laughs> no, I do. Do you? I care about everyone's personal life, especially our <laughs> listeners and viewers and followers. I thought you had restraining orders that stopped you from doing that. Uh, it's a new year. Uh, <laughs> December 31st is when uh, those, those all, all went away. So anyway, yeah, we want to hear uh, your uh, New Year's gardening resolutions. We'll tell you some of ours. Uh, I'll tell you one of mine right now is to finish my book. Your book? Yes, I'm writing a book on my first book on roses. Did we know this, really? Did Tiger? Did we? I can't remember. This, really? this seems no. I don't. I had no idea. No, we didn't tell us about oh. this. Yeah. It's going to be. Uh, it's. I don't believe a book has ever been written about polyantha roses, and so that's what this book's going to be about. Okay, how can I get into this book? <laughs> <laughs> you can take some pictures with plants. I want to get into this book somehow. You weren't in my last two books. <laughs> but this one's This different. is the third, the third time around. Third time's a charm. I'll if stop. you know what's good for your future career... Uh -huh. <laughs> You might want to entertain those thoughts. Wow. I could take, I could, wow. I could now let me ask you this, though. I, I could uh, send you some pictures, and you could maybe choose the ones that you think are good. Do you have any polyantha roses, though? A ton of them. <laughs> ton so of them. this book, John, yes. is it going to be on how to grow polyantha roses? Is it going to be kind of like a... Um... The, that'll be a minor, like maybe a chapter or something but uh -huh. the main thing is going to be identifying varieties of polyantha roses okay. like my last book uh, that bob and i wrote on succulents yeah how we had a hundred succulents and descriptions when when i was at uh when i was a young nurseryman in michigan at frank's nursery we used to get uh margo coster polyantha rose for mother's day every year and i believe at that time there may have been five or six polyantha roses that were still being grown. And now uh, there's probably a hundred that you could easily get and maybe another hundred that would be hard to get. Uh, but they're, they're pretty old. They came out 
Now I'm getting into the book, and there's going to be no reason for you to buy the no, book. No, no, this, this is a tease. If this yeah. was a talk okay. show, our guest today is John Bagnesco, who's writing a book on, on Polly Kindle and the and Roses. Stuff. They let you read almost like a chapter before they cut you off. So, ah. so John, when did this whole rose fat thing start? Well, <laughs> Polly and the Roses started at the turn of the last century, Victorian times. And they were a cross between uh, Chinese roses and Rosa multiplora. But the cool thing about that was they became popular for maybe 10 years, and then they were replaced with Floribunda roses, which were originally called hybrid polyanthas. John, we have to take a break. We do want to hear the rest That's of enough, this. That's enough, because that at, enough? when we come back, we've got other things to okay, talk about. Okay, we've got other things. So welcome to the new year, 2022. Those on Facebook Live, those uh, listening on BizTalk Radio with this pre-recorded show, we do appreciate your support. Thank you for everything you've, uh, you've done for us in terms of just being there, listening and watching and, and taking part in Garden America all these years. A new year is uh, here, 2022. We're going to take our first break of the new year. I'm Brian Maine, John Bagnesco, Tiger Palafox. We are Garden America. Happy New Year. Well, we are back from our commercial break on BizTalk Radio a bit quicker in terms of how we progress on Facebook Live. No commercials. We are going to continue to be commercial-free on Facebook Live for at least uh, the next year, 2022. Welcome back to the show. Hope you had a good holiday season, a good Christmas. Here we are. A lot of people have uh, Monday off. Tiger, do you have Monday off or not? No. I do. I will be working. One of my rare days off. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Because it's because of the Christmas and New Year fell on a weekend. The Saturday weather's give you that extra supposed day. to be nice on Monday. Oh, yeah. You know, we haven't talked to our meteorologist, John Bagnasco, yeah, yet this I year. Yeah, I think that if you want to come over and help me plant some trees and maybe a few roses. Trees? The ground will be nice yeah. and soft. You know, one of these days I'm going to take that random day off and take you up on that. Well, you don't have to take the day off. You've got it off. I've already got plans, though. I well, bring Dana. Sure. Dana's got to work on Monday. Oh, I think. So you have plans without Dana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the new year. <laughs> so right. as John mentioned, no guest today, but we brought a lot of plants in. We want to hear about uh, your experiences uh, with the holidays and what you're growing, what you plan to do, and uh, how you plan to uh, become part of uh, Garden America this year. You know, I told you one of my resolutions was to finish my book, and I wondered if you had a resolution that Dana could appreciate about your patio, maybe. Like, do you need to add a few more plants? <laughs> Let me tell you, and, and well, John, you were, op I don't know if, if you saw the, the progression of what I've had to do. You know what? Not only did I see that, uh, How do you know next I week I'm going to bring in a budded maiden since oh, yeah. it's a new year. talking about that. Budded maiden. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be great to show on Facebook. But the... I don't know how this just popped into my mind, and you know how I am with that. Mm -hmm. Stream of consciousness. Right. So uh, I'm going to bring in a green planet rose. Do you remember I came over and brought the— I gave you cuttings. Gave me cuttings. I sent them off to Wisconsin, had them budded, and wow. I'm going to show you. It's not growing yet, but I'm going to show you what's going to happen. I was so happy to be part of this whole thing, though, yeah. to be able to do that. Yeah, so really, you don't need to be in the book. you got to be part of this. No, 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 yeah. no. The book thing's going to happen. <laughs> so, so when I talked about the progression, because John said adding you know, more plants to the yeah. patio, okay, we're full. There's no more patio plants. What I did, though, was I took a lot of those plants outside the pathway leading up to the front door. I've got all the roses on the, on the left-hand side as you walk in on the... Right-hand side is a banana tree and the hibiscus and so on and so forth. 
And so far, the HOA hasn't said anything. And, and the landscapers are very good. In my broken Spanish, I explain to them what I'm doing. Ah, no problem. You know, they work around it. They rake and they put the things back where they belong. And so I've had to take my patio and bring it to the front of the condo. Ah. And so far, so good. No one says, hey, put those back. You can't have those out there. Well, you can always hope that a lot of your plants will die during the winter and then you'll have <laughs> more, more room. room. Why would you say something like that? <laughs> <laughs> the we thing that I'm worried you about. You were telling me about your plumeria I'm rotting. It, well, okay, I, I, it's, it is rotting is what's happening. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, you know, New Year's resolution, and I have the same one because I had the same problem. And people out there that have been getting the rains, one of the things, tell, tell them what happened to your plumeria. Okay, Brian. so with uh, the consistent rain, right. and nonstop, nonstop, and being at work all day, I would come home and there would be water in the in the pot. Yeah. Normally with good drainage, but with so much rain, it just couldn't drain fast enough. And so I would tip the water over and put it back. And then you said, go one step further. And John said, just tip the pot over yeah. during the rain so it doesn't fill up. But when I went to, to grab the plumeria, it's very loose. All plumerias are loose, though. Right. Yeah. And you don't grab the plumeria. You just tip the pot over. No, no. I went When I went to, I wanted to see. Yeah. yeah. yeah see, you have and no business seeing I that. touch. <laughs> I'm you touchy don't, feeling. You don't need to do that. But now so I will say, be okay. now, but I, I will say, me. but on my end, again, I came home from a trip. I look out there. Again, one of my plumeria pots is full of water. And yep. so I, That's a bad I, sign. I instantly tipped it over. That's what I did. But Fine. it was rooted. So what had happened was the plumeria had grown, and it sent a root through the drain hole of the pot, which then clogged the drain hole. So now I have to tip it over, empty out all the water, and then I have to go and break that root in the base so that way it can start draining again. Is it bad for the plumerias to be getting all this water this time of the year, yes. though? Yeah. Very bad. Because they're it's, going dormant. Yeah. And, the, and the temperature's cold. And then and the cold water and damp and is just not saturated. Good. Well, it's if this thing survives, real quick. if this survives, I'm going to write a book. Yeah, on how to grow on plumerias. this whole, I mean, because <laughs> I looked at it, and I told Dana, I go, because when you, when you gave it to me and I transplanted it, I said, Dana, this is yours. We're going to, you know, I'm going to take good care of it. This is your <laughs> plumeria. This is way he's sneaking more plants. Yeah, yeah. Dana, this, Dana is this is yours. This is yours. Yeah. This yeah. is yours, Dana. She was excited. And then late, the other day she goes, how is it coming along? Yeah, how's go, mine? I go, you know what? It's going to be all right. What do you mean all right? <laughs> Everything's good. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Was her ban- was that banana hers too? The one that you r- almost rotted and killed? No, that was mine. You know what's interesting <laughs> about that? What's Speaking that? of that, because you saw the progression of the growth, right? So it grew up to about last I'm time say, I saw it, it looked fantastic. Gonna, yeah, about three feet, and it's just stopped, but it's spreading out, as opposed to before when it grew very high. So I don't know what it's doing. It looks good. Leaves That's are good. All that counts. Shiny looks. You know. You know me, I like shiny leaves. I'm a shiny leaf guy. Yeah, you're attracted by shiny plants. <laughs> Look at Dana up here. Don't kill my plumeria. <laughs> put a, uh, okay. put a couple of shiny things on there. Yeah. You guys want to get into these plants? What's yeah. uh, What do you want to do How much here? time do we got before our next break? So we we have uh, about two and a half, three minutes. Okay. I'll just cut you off like oh, I always do. Oh, you know what? Do. We didn't do the quote of the week. Ooh. That's a yeah, shame. Get that ready. Well, make sure we do that next week. Go ahead, Tiger. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, this is a Wait good for quote. John. Yeah. And actually, to kick off the new year. It's a great quote. And the quote is, uh, what a wonderful thought that some of the best days of our lives haven't even happened yet. I love that quote. And That's... especially since it was from Anne Frank. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, a, the a, glass half full. a soap opera John used to watch called The Days of Our Lives. Remember? I never watched soap These operas. Yeah. The I days of our lives. I, no, no, no. John was about to say, used to. <laughs> I've never watched it. I uh, never no. got into soap I, d- I did when they were on at night. Really? Yeah. Uh, the first nighttime soap opera, do you recall? Starred uh, Dorothy Malone, Ryan O'Neill. Peyton Place. Peyton Place, right. And, and what's your name? Used to be married to Frank Sinatra. Mia Farrow. Oh, yeah, Mia Farrow. Yeah. Right. This Christopher mid-60s Conley. mid-60s, Tiger. Like Melrose Place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it was prior to Melrose yeah. Place. And, and, then, and then that became a, like a buzzword. Like if people were talking about other people, like rumors, you'd say, this is just a Peyton place. I'm not going to listen to this. Yeah. People always talking about other people. Right. In Chicago, if you mention a Peyton place, it was where one of their players lived, one of the Bears. Walter Peyton. Sweetness. (laughs) Sweetness. Do you remember uh, 
Now that you mentioned <laughs> that, now John's going to take this discussion into Seriously. football. No, I'm going to take it football. into roses. Okay. Do you remember Deb Zeri was on, and she's she, a New York Giants fan. She was, but she mentioned that they were going to put out a rose called Sweetness. Oh. Yeah. After Walter After Payton. Walter Payton. After Walter yeah. Payton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So anyway, All right. Tiger. All right, Tiger. Which one? All right. The stage which, is yours. So I'll I'll talk about mine first that I brought in. And so I'm going to put a picture up on the screen for those of you that are watching, watching on Facebook Live. For those of you listening, go to our Facebook stream. Um, you can see these past videos in the um, archives. And this is a Begonia Dregi. And John got me excited because you brought in a St. Hel- Saint Helena? St. Hel- I'm trying to Something St. Think- Bo- Bo- Begonia, a dwarf Begonia. Right. It wasn't a St. Helena, was it? I can't remember. St. Tra- Helena? I think it's St. Helena. Yeah. Which is an island in the halfway between Africa and the U.S. You know yeah. what? You are so right because I watched a guy who does travel videos uh-huh. and he, he, was on, he stayed like two nights on there. Beautiful uh, vegetation. Right. And a lot of beautiful plants. Right. A very, in, but a very out of the way place, though. You have to know where you're going before you get there. Right. And the begonia that I brought in was native to St. Helena. Yeah. Right. And. Uh, has really thick stems, almost like a succulent. Well, the picture that I posted right now is of a gardener from Colorado who posted his. You know what? I got to catch you off. Begonia. Only because we got so wrapped up in the conversation <laughs> that I'm running late for the network. This is for you, Biz Talk Radio. Quick break coming right back. And as Tiger mentioned, you can always watch us live on Facebook Live, Garden America, back after these messages. Welcome back to the show, the first show of the new year, 2021, a special New Year's show here with your garden buddies. I'm Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. And uh, just prior to the break, had to cut Tiger off again as we get into some of these plants and uh, discuss uh, what we have in studio, Tiger. Yeah, so I was talking about the Begonia Dragi. It's a compact um, begonia. And the picture that I have posted is of a gentleman in Colorado who's grown it as a bonsai. And it's got little white flowers, almost like maple leaf-like foliage. Um, But being a begonia, it has that bulbous trunk and, you know, bigger stems. So it's just a a unique plant. So if people are shopping, and this is what I think John got trapped into when he was in Idaho out there shopping, is when you see something unique at a nursery, you well, you buy it because it's unique. You don't ever know if you see it again kind of at a nursery. Um, So this is definitely one that I got excited about. Um, for this upcoming show, and I, I think I'm going to make it an addition to um, my patio for sure. What nursery were you shopping at? Mission Hills Nursery. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I'll have to drop by there sometime. Yeah. All right, John, you want to go to one of yours? All right, pick one. Um, let's see. I got a picture of the eyelash fern. I had never seen that fern before. It's yeah. one that's uh, it's native to Australia. And uh, likes warmer temperatures. So in Idaho, for sure, it's a house plant. But I'm thinking that I might be able to find somewhere to plant that outdoors. But it stays small. It's not a big plant. Well, that's good for a lot of people who have small spaces. And and if you look at the plant, Brian, you can see why it's called an eyelash fern. There's actually a photo. I I was trying to find photos of it. It's funny because there's not a lot of photos that are actually bigger than the pot the plant you brought in or showing it in the wild yeah but there is a photo of a model wearing those little ferns as she actually cut them off and put them on as eyelashes yeah exactly i thought that was pretty cool so that's a it's it's a very cool plant it seems very hardy for a fern too well except that it's tropical so i think it's going to be tender but it's it's great for terrarium since it doesn't get big you know a lot of ferns just get too big for a terrarium great idea yeah, not yeah. aquarium, Brian. No, terrarium. Yeah. I used to have a terrarium. You used to have lizards. Yep. Snakes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You I, should was, take I was one. snake boy. This looks like one of those plants that could live underwater. I don't think it can, but well, you, you know those ones that do look like they do you, live underwater? You know, it's interesting. When, when I was buying plants earlier uh, last year uh, for my aquarium, there are plants that are titled semi-aquatic. Right. Which means you can put them in a terrarium or like even a dryer 
uh, like say say you had like lizard snakes and you wanted the under the heat lamp and stuff, and they even some of them live underwater as well. Yeah. So who knows? Yeah. Maybe. Well, I mean, the nice thing about the aquarium too, and John's talked about this before, is because it's oxygenated water. It's very different than just like st- stagnant underwater kind of a thing. Right. Yeah. Hey, um, speaking of that, uh, underwater, I used to put pothos into water. Yeah. And they would live. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, exactly. you can't. They live under any conditions. It, yeah. You can't kill them. Next okay. up on the docket. Well, Kevin wants to know where our creeping Charlie plan is. <laughs> Says <laughs> nice, we're bringing, bringing back the 70s. Yeah. We're, don't worry, but we're going to be doing uh, macrame in right. a little bit here. Right. And, and we're uh, going to paint the studio avocado green. Yep. You Very know good. what's interesting about the houseplant craze of the 70s compared to the plants we brought in today is I don't believe any of the plants we're showing today were available in the 70s. No. Well, also, at least I didn't see any it, of these. It's, you know, we're going to talk about this next week with the the guest next week a little bit, but in the seventies they were still like pillaging native areas for houseplants. You know what I mean? Like in right. the seventies they were still going in. Collectors and were just collectors going out just, and wiping you know, out an entire and, area yeah. of, of ferns, orchids, right? All that stuff. Remember? Yeah. I don't. Re- my own personal opinion is that really was not a bad thing. Because a lot of those plants ended up being saved just because people were collecting them. Because uh, construction would, uh, they'd go in. Decimated and anyways. Would, Yeah, they would go in with tractors and bulldozers and just wipe out whole areas. Yeah. And those plants were destroyed forever. But a collector at least took care of them. True, true. There are some pros and cons, right? So why don't, right, we, why don't we do the next fern or you want yeah, to do the it? next fern if you have the yes go for it this one really surprised me when i was in idaho um you can't see it in the picture that i have but it's called an antenna fern and the reason it's called an antenna fern is that it's flat and doesn't look very fern like uh i don't know if i think tiger's gonna have a picture we got a close up there of it but it puts out tall stems that are about six to ten inches tall with the little fern leaves on the top. That's that's a really neat plant, too. I don't have the photo of it because, you know, what's funny is the photo on the tag looked nothing like the photo of the plant. And it's because, like, what you talked about, right. those are actually the little antenna parts of the plant. Not It looks like, what is that? The What is it? Not a litho. Uh, there's that little succulent that has that kind of flat succulent foliage and but it, i didn't think this was a fern at all i thought it had the wrong tag at first oh really <laughs> well the if you want to look it up online it's dory opteris cordata i think cordata means heart like right so they're not really heart shaped leaves but um anyway it, it'll sh- if you look online you'll see some mature pictures of that and yeah. it's when I saw the plants in um, Idaho, I, I was just amazed because they had never seen anything like that. And I and the reason I didn't buy one that had those uh, taller uh, fronds, mature fronds, I wasn't smuggling it, but I thought it would be <laughs> easier to pack the plant if it didn't have yeah. those because I thought they would just break. Bring up the word smuggle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know if that's even ever used as something good. <laughs> Use it in a sentence where it's positive, John. Oh. You know, but if you change the M to an N, it's a very nice word. Yeah, it's very true. I snuggled it. You yeah. snuggled it out of uh, prison, yes. Yeah, I snuggled, snuggled it. Snuggled out of prison. <laughs> okay, do we have another one? Do you have one? Um, I do. Okay. Yeah. So I will bring in my, my Christmas gift to you. Hold on one second. Um, so since you're out there in Fallbrook and you have new land, and, mm-hmm. you know, I know you're not going to develop – all of your land so some of it you mentioned tree pit and other areas i brought you a native so this is a quiamaca cypress which quiamaca is a native area that we have here in san diego so this comes from the quiamaca mountains yeah and i've seen that that's very familiar yeah i covered john's face with it right there so i i got a picture of it these are very cool plants because the shape of them you know the cypresses have those cool shapes right you know they make it's not a bush it's not a tree it's kind of like neat in shape and texture so these are definitely too right oh very right the um the these ones are cool that you can plant kind of like in a 
area of your garden that you can see and you can see the color and the shape and the texture. So I thought this one was good for you, John, the Cuyamaca Cypress. I didn't think you had that one maybe in your area I don't. yet. I don't. Yeah. I think it'll do quite well where John lives. But what yeah. I did plant on my hillside uh, during the break, by the way, we got five to six inches of rain while we were gone. Did you get that much? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, all the flooding. Yeah, that was it was nice. Um, but I did plant the uh, anisodontia that you gave me a oh, couple okay. of years ago. And the plant you gave me died. Oh. But it had rooted from the pot into the ground. So I dug up the what was in, growing in the ground and split it in three. And now I have three plants in full Whoa. of bloom. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Look at you. Nice. Yeah, even when... Even when they die for John, they regrow into more. Yeah, I was surprised that the the main part of the plant, when I actually saw that the one in the pot had died, the main part was in the ground. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, so that's um, John's Christmas present is a Queen Maca Cypress. Thank you. Yeah. I Beautiful. appreciate that. Your, right. I think your guy's Christmas present I might have been scammed on, but uh, <laughs> we'll hopefully see. within a week we'll I'll see. be able to find out. Okay, yours is sitting on the counter at home. <laughs> <laughs> so how about that? Oh, all right. <laughs> it's not a, <laughs> yeah, it's not a kitty, kitty cat, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so what's right. next? Which one do you want to do next from your What collection? about the philodendron? Okay. Oh, yeah, it. one because of my favorites. Philodendrons are... Are hot now, right? Oh yeah, yeah, they're back. They're coming back. And if for again, and sorry for those of you listening on BizTalk Radio and the network, but I have a picture up of this philodendron. Um, in the love foliage, the the variegation on this foliage is just so striking and amazing. Um, philodendron Birkin, 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 yeah, Birkin. Uh, right now, variegated philodendrons are extremely. Uh, expensive and the reason is that if they're tissue cultured they lose their variegation this particular one here though doesn't and it i think it's uh, it's probably from the netherlands with a name like birkin it's about break time john real quick okay we're going to come back birkin don't lose your train of thought. Philodendron. Philodendron, that's House it. Plant. This is a break for uh, BizTalk Radio. Down. Hey, uh, those on BizTalk Radio can always watch our show live. Go to Garden America Radio Show on Facebook. Also our YouTube channel, Garden America Radio, and our website, GardenAmerica.com. So there you go. Quick break. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. Welcome back to Garden America. Those on BizTalk Radio, thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting our, our many sponsors. Again, this is the uh, final segment of our number one news coming up top of the hour. And hopefully your market carries our show second hour, six minutes after. For the rest of us on Facebook Live, we continue. Birkin, John. Birkin. Yeah, uh, let me answer a yes. couple questions really quick from Facebook. Um, Rick wants to know if I went to Edwards and I can't remember the name of the nursery. The only one I remember, remember that uh, we did go to was Franz White Nursery. Hmm. And that was kind of expensive. Um, and that's where some of these plants came from. And the other one, it may have been Edwards, but I, I can't think of it. But the, the other one that wasn't Franz White, I really, really liked. So I'm not sure, Rick. <laughs> And then uh, Carla was asking, uh, how how did I get these plants home? She promises she won't tell. Well, you snuggled them. I snuggled them. Snuggled Haven't up you to been them? listening to us? Kept, kept it very close to your heart. Right. No, there's no reason that you can't bring plants on an airplane. So I, I put these in a, a bag, carried them on the airplane, and put them under my seat. Remember that old movie, Snakes on a Plane? Yeah. The follow-up was Plants on a Plane. There you go. So, obviously, <laughs> There's no problem. So anyway, back to the Birkin philodendron. Um, you know how easily or how easy it is to grow philodendrons or plants in the uh, Araceae family, aeroids. So the, uh, the Birkin is really cool because it's a self-heading philodendron. And by that I mean y you can grow it the way it is, put it on your desk, uh, put it on a windowsill at home. But if you 
as it grows, it doesn't need to be staked, and it'll get to be three feet tall. Without staking it. Without staking it. So you have a nice bush. You've got that great color. Um, and they're grown from tissue culture, so they're cheaper than some philodendrons. I was telling you about the philodendron Spiriti Santi, which there's only six known left in the world. Six. And I think they're in Brazil from uh, if there's a town in Brazil called a Espirito Sancto. So that's where the genus of this comes from. But anyway, um, I saw a plant on eBay or Etsy, I'm not sure which, a four-inch pot for $27,000. You might want to repeat that for those that are saying, what did he say? $27,000. $27,000. Right. So a lot of these philodendrons are really expensive. So I guess the reason I bring that up is to make myself feel better that I only paid $23 <laughs> for that one. For that one. And Tiger tells me I could have got it for a lot less at Mission Hills Nursery. <laughs> no. no. You, but do you have a good supply of philodendrons? I think so. I think so. I don't know if we have that one, though. So, you know, they're all there's a lot of different varieties. And, you know, John, since you wrote the book on houseplants, now philodendrons are also one of those plants that when you – keep increasing the size of the pot the plant gets bigger and bigger right. as well right right so and you... some of them have immature leaves and mature leaves right like a split leaf philodendron doesn't split, split until, until it gets until... older right i love the split leaf so on yeah. on these philodendrons that people you know get in four inch because again they're you know 23 dollars for a four inch and they get it home is it one of those ones if they want to grow they put it in a big pot right away and then let it grow out or do you need to kind of increase the pot with the size of the plant it's always best especially if you overwater like brian does <laughs> i don't it, think i overwater <laughs> just it was actually god that was over water yeah, that plants. True. yes absolutely yeah. right. you would think he would know better <laughs> but anyway yes yeah. that's true and this uh, birkin philodendron is a sport of a philodendron that was called they think it's a sport of a philodendron called red congo and so sometimes this will put out leaves with red patches on oh, them. Oh, okay. God, even more yeah. reason to become a philodendron fan. Cool. Yeah. And sometimes you'll get a leaf that's completely red-green without yeah, the when striping I, in it. Yeah, when I was looking at the photos, there were a few that had that red in it. Yeah. Okay, philodendron, and is that a ficus over there? Yeah, now this one I thought was interesting because... It's Ficus bengalensis Audrey. And look at the size of those leaves. <laughs> look at the, the shininess. I mean, those leaves are, big, <laughs> are almost bigger than the entire plant itself. Uh, the huge leaves. Uh, they're not huge. You don't think those are those for the size of that John, plant? Do you think they're huge? John's very, I, don't think, I do not think they are huge, but John right. is very sensitive to you calling his leaves huge. Okay. No, I don't. I don't mind. I just, I. They're not as big as the philodendron leaves. I mean, but I mean, it's for the for comparing it to the size of the plant itself to yeah, be the that little, the little twig that it's on. Yeah, exactly. The whole sculpture. That is a substantial right. leaf. Well, yes, let, let me. First of all, I can't find out why the variety is called Audrey, <laughs> because Ficus bengalensis is the natu national tree of India. Mm -hmm. It's a banyan tree. Right. And you remember Timmy from banyan. No, but you remember uh, from Hawaii, uh, like if you're in Lahaina, the banyan tree that's yeah. there. Yeah. Those, they'll cover an acre. No, everything is big yes. in Hawaii. So my thought was, I bet I can grow this outdoors here. Ooh, that's and, a challenge accepted. Yeah, and have a banyan tree. In, Why not? In 60 years, you're going to have half of your property covered with a tree. A Intergal. tree. 60 years, uh, Tiger would be 100. <laughs> I don't think I'll be around. Even Betty White couldn't have made that. Yeah. So um, the reason that this is uh, becoming such a popular house plant is it's replacing fiddle leaf figs as a house plant because they do better indoors. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that fiddle leaf fig became so popular because it's actually kind of a challenge to, to, grow, to grow it, yeah. right? Yeah. Plus, if you lo lose if you lose a leaf on a ficus benjamina, you just pick it up and throw it, <laughs> throw it away. away. Yeah. But you lose a leaf on a fiddle leaf fig, yeah, it's half it the tree. 
Got to put it, tape it back on, right? <laughs> right. So this is the the hot new indoor tree. So even if you don't have room to plant a banyan in your backyard, yeah, uh, you can you can grow one of these, and it grows faster. I mean, obviously a lot faster. There's the whole um, what is it, elastica, ficus? That's the rubber plant. The rubber plant, right? right. And those grow into like bushes and trees as well. But this one, I think, grows into a, a nicer, like indoor tree. Right. The, it, the it, elastica, they have the decora elastica and the regular elastica. Right. I don't think those make as nice of, of trees for indoors. And the same with fiddle leaf fig. It's not easy to shape a fiddle leaf fig. No. Oh, gosh. Yeah. 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 Where you, this you're, one, at, you're at the whim of it. Yeah. But I think this one, uh, I, it's, right now it's the hottest new indoor tree. Yeah. And, and you could even grow in a container outdoors on your patio, Brian. How about that? Hey, we're just in time for our next uh, break. What? It is break time on Biz Jeez, Talk Radio. Man, man. That's our number one, just like that. But those of us on Facebook Live, we're going to keep on trucking. Again, news coming up top of the hour, Biz Talk Radio, back at six minutes after. Hopefully your local market still carries our show. So, again, welcome to our New Year's edition here on Garden America. Brian Maine, John Bagnasker, Tiger Palafox, taking a break. Biz Talk Radio for news. Facebook Live coming right back here on Garden America. So, Tony, uh, your mom says... Welcome back to the show. Those on uh, BizTalk Radio, this is hour number two. It is six minutes after the hour, according to you in this uh, rebroadcast. Those of us here on uh, Facebook, if uh, you want to get technical, 47 minutes after the hour, no matter where you are, on this Saturday morning, New Year's Day of 2022, thank you for joining us. Hope you're enjoying all these interesting plans we brought into the studio today with a little bit of background, and um, maybe this is something that you want to look into yourself. There are two questions that came across on Facebook. Um, one was from um, Rick about um, what was it? Oh shoot, I just lost it. He um, said, "Is it better to plant yeah. in a them decorative pot? right into a decorative pot, or put them in a container that will fit the pot?" I am a fan of fitting them in a container that fits a decorative pot because I like the ability to take the plant out, yep. maybe put it outside, wash it off, do whatever, and then bring it back inside. And putting it inside that decorative yeah, pot. Yeah, because the decorative pot makes it very heavy and difficult to move later on, yep. and then if you break it. So I'm a big fan of that. Especially if there's no drainage in the pot. Oh, gosh. If right. there's no drainage in the pot, if there's not a hole for sure, just use it as a, a uh, decorative container and, and mm -hmm. put your plant inside that. Don't plant into that. Yeah. You're just asking asking for trouble. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think it, you know, case by case, if you're never going to move it. But I think at the end of the day, we all move our We all move plants. them around. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, We all move our houses. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, decorative pot is nice. And then, like John mentioned, I mean, the nice thing about the decorative pot is that you could almost use anything as a right. decorative pot and even if it does have drainage you can put saucers inside that decorative pot you never catch see the it. water yep. never see it you know that kind of a look too so um a, a good nursery pot i think is all that they need for house plants. and the, the other beautiful of it is we were just talking about is that a lot of house plants can be in small smaller pots mm -hmm. you know like i have like this seven foot tall dracaena and it's in like a two gallon pot, you know, like, and it's fine. It's happy. So, yeah, mine's about that tall. Yeah. Right by the front door. <laughs> yeah. And, Very tall. Well, and, the nice thing about smaller pots on some of those tall plants is that you don't have to worry about the roots rotting. Right. Because there's no soil left. It's no, just, just roots. All and, roots. Just all roots. You just got to make sure you fertilize and water them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there was another question, and I know we touched on it a little bit, but John, you went shopping while you were out of state to bring them in on a plane right and so when you package these in your do you wrap them in paper like how do you how do you pack them to bring a them lot home? of them had sleeves when i was at the nursery Ooh, because lucky. that's a good i was going from the greenhouse to the car and the temperature outside was like 22 <laughs> degrees and they would just freeze right oh my gosh it's so crazy especially some of the tropical ones by the way uh, gina just chimed in and said yes rick we went to edwards that's where he got the ficus. Oh, okay. Oh. I thought. Thank you, Gina. Okay, Rick. So we were at Edwards, and that was really my favorite nursery. Nice. Um, Franz White was a little bit higher class nursery. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a, more like a Rogers Garden oh, type. Oh, okay. Uh, a lot of decorating and things like that, and prices were a lot higher. But it was interesting to see their selection. They also had a great selection of plants from Isley Nursery, the uh, uh, nursery in Boring, Oregon. Uh huh. Not that Oregon's boring. I know all about Boring, Oregon. That's the name of the town. And uh, Isley is probably the country's premier grower of conifers. Ooh. And they have a large selection of dwarf conifers. Oh, that's so and cool. Uh, those are for another show. I have a couple. Uh, oh, yeah. did you get some? Because a couple cedrus. Sometimes yeah. they don't. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of them don't do well here. Right, but cedrus do. Yes. Uh, and, you know, the studio, we get a lot of comments how nice the studio looks when we have all these plants in here. It adds to the stage, to the, uh, what do you want to call this, the studio stage? Yeah. Yeah. So Edwards um, had the best selection. Uh, Franz White, by the way, is where my son bought the gnome that's there. Yeah. And, gnome. and what I really liked about the gnome was it had some succulents attached to it. So I was going to make a succulent garden to put that in, but my wife right now has it sitting by the front door because it matches the colors of the house perfectly. <laughs> she said that we should leave it there for a while. <laughs> so right you know, now right now it's going to be there. But I, I really, I really enjoyed Edwards for the – selection of plants that they had and the prices were a little bit better nice they had probably edwards had they maybe they grow their own poinsettias but they had the largest selection of poinsettia varieties that i ever right. saw that's cool when you can grow your own because that's yeah. going to really what is going to allow you to have that selection is if you do grow your own well what they what they had that uh, has always intrigued me was the white poinsettias and the poinsettias that we normally sell in California that are white are really kind of a creamy, creamy color. color. But yeah. these were bright white, yeah. pure white. Yeah. And we, I, I don't know if you had those this We year. were able to get some in, but uh -huh. they were the smaller leafed ones. Oh. See, I know which one you're talking yeah, about with big. the big leaf, right. and it's a pure white. Right. That's really cool. Yeah. We got in these ones, but they were a smaller leaf, pure white. And they I, I didn't think they were as cool. I like that big big leaf on the poinsettia right hopefully it, you're sold out of them now because your yeah, mom's listening to you to, yeah. <laughs> yes. right exactly. disparage your yeah. inventory <laughs> um so really cool gnome and it's funny did you see that even the gnome hat has like echeveria shapes yep. and stuff on it yeah. as well yeah like, it's pretty cool so it's not just the little like succulents on the ear it's also on the hat it's and i really did go cool. on to ebay and see that those not ebay um uh, Etsy? The internet. Oh, the internet. The internet. <laughs> the, the worldwide the web. I mean, what is the <laughs> internet besides eBay and Amazon? Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I did did find out that that is available to order online. The gnome. Yeah. All right. So you cool. don't have to go to Alaska to get you it. You don't yeah. have to go to Nome, Alaska to get that, Brian. Right. So it's funny. I wanted to mention on your um, gnome. So Janine, my wife, has asked me to do one thing for her in the garden. I'm going to try to work on it this year. I'll, I'll give myself a full 12 months I recall to get another story where you said the same thing. Look, she only wants me to do one thing. Yeah, and it's that's always only this. one thing. And then she, as soon as I accomplish that one thing, it's another thing. Well, you know, it's good for her, one at a time. Yeah, exactly. But she wants a windmill in our landscape somewhere. Okay. Like one of those decorative yeah. You know, I, I agree with her 100%. I, I do, too. <laughs> because I've always wanted a windmill. And you could do the same thing. Yeah. yeah, how tall? It's like tall one, she, right? She wants like a good size one, like yep. six, seven feet or taller. Yeah. You know, oh, kind sure. of thing. She wants a substantial. Well, she has deal. our support. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got to figure out where I'm going to put a windmill. Let me give you a hint. Make sure that it's tall enough for you to walk under, so nobody gets hit. Nobody in the gets head. hit by the spinning blade. Right. right. Good idea. Good idea. Okay. All right. Um, the my, flowering. My daughter did comment on Facebook that. Um, Edwards Nursery did grow their own poinsettias and actually sold them to other nurseries. So that was why they had such a good selection. And she also mentions uh, talking. Three degrees today. Apparently. Yeah, it's three to three degrees in Meridian. So if you're buying houseplants up there, make sure that they're covered when you leave. Now, so I, like, I like that. All right. Now, this is, this is interesting. This is a streptocarpus. And streptocarpus are related to African violets. Very except, similar. Look at it. Yeah, except in my experience, 
By the way, uh, just an aside, my wife told me yesterday, you know the streptocarpus are very easy to propagate. It's like, <laughs> that's oh, a hint. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> that a hint. Yeah. Like, have uh, you been on the, on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> I said, are you talking about starting them from leaves like African violets? And she goes, yeah. I go, well, that's not really that easy. Yeah. It takes yeah. a lot of time. But anyway, yes, you can start them from leaves like African violets. But the nice thing about uh, Cape Primrose, in my experience, Tiger, is that in San Diego, they actually will last uh, outdoors, where a violet's going to freeze in the winter for sure. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, are I, we talking outdoors in a pot on your patio, or are I've, we talking I've planted outdoors? them in the ground really? on a hillside so they got great drainage. And so how low did the temps get? Well, zeros. they don't usually don't go below freezing. Yeah, but the temperature, if you've got some uh, uh, shade cover from a tree, you get a little more protection. But anyway, um, I just find them hardier than violets. But the place we were at, now I, I can't remember Beep. that. Beep. I think that might have been Franz White, but they Franz were White. like ten dollars a piece, right? I love it that. This was ten dollars. This four-inch beautiful flowering plant, right? And then your other four-inch just leafy plant was well, it's twenty-three dollars. Twenty-three dollars. Hey, we're going to take a quick break and come back and continue our conversation. Those on Facebook Live, chime in. We love showing you these plants. Those on Biz Talk Radio. Once again, you can always watch the show live. Go to Garden America Radio on Facebook. Go to our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm noticing more people sub subscribing and liking our YouTube channel. Keep up the good work. Break time on Biz Talk Radio. Back after these messages. Welcome back. Thank you for sitting through the break on uh, Biz Talk Radio. Those on Facebook Live, welcome. Our special uh, New Year's Day show, New Year's of 2022. Thank you for being there. Have a great year lined up and planned for you. And again, today with no guest, we thought we'd bring in some plants, talk about some various plants, uh, maybe some plants you've never seen before, maybe some a little more rare than others. Yeah, some new, some of your New Year's resolutions, too. We told you ours. I haven't heard any from our listeners yet. Yeah. Really. But it, uh I wanted to bring up, we're talking about the streptocarpus here, and I said that in my experience, they're much easier to grow than African violets, and they bloom almost all year. So that's another nice thing. But he, here's a tip. You can order them online, and uh, there's a great source called the Violet Barn, violetbarn.com. And I've ordered from them before years ago, and they're in New York. And I ordered in the middle of winter, and they shipped from New York in the middle of winter, and the plants arrived in San Diego in perfect condition. Really? Yeah. And wow. they, they put one of the, the same thing that they use for tropical fish, the uh, heat pack, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to keep the box warm while they shipped it. Yeah. And everything arrived perfectly. Uh, they So they obviously the Violet Barn has a great collection of African violets, but also streptocarpus. Now, their streptocarpus are a little bit smaller. Uh, I think they're three inch instead of four inch. But if you want uh, one just like the one that's here, you can go to littleprinceplants.com. Little Prince Plant. And most of the com. plants that we have here today, um, I'm not yeah. sure about Tiger's Plants, but most of the others are available from Little, Little Prince. Prince. Right. And, you know, when it's raining and it's cold outside, it's great to let your fingers do the walking through the Internet. And you can go online. You can find uh, littleprince.com, littleprinceplants.com. You can find out about the plant, look at their price, and then you can search through the Internet and find out who else is selling it, right? Are you talking about Shop and Compare? Exactly. What a great idea. <laughs> and the tiger just posted the... Uh we we're talking chia plants. Yeah, on our Facebook page. There. Kevin had mentioned you should get a chia gnome, and I said, "Ah, oh, that's a great idea." And then I posted a picture of a or a link to a chia gnome um, that people can buy off of Amazon because. But it's the beard. It'd be cool. It'd be better yeah, if it beard, was the right? hat. It'd be better if it was the hat. Now, to be Tiger, able to grow. didn't 
at Mission Hills, you guys are uh, have gnome themes, don't you? Don't you have a giant traveling gnome there? We have yes, a you travel do have velocity a, yes. gnome. Or we something? have a um, man. How tall is that gnome? Probably be ten feet tall gnome mm -hmm. as you enter the nursery. Um, standing there that says "Welcome to you know Mission Hills Nursery," um, and yeah, we dress him up for the different holidays and things like that. So yes, we love gnomes at the nursery. Yeah, you do. We were uh, when we were talking all of our work. about Edwards Nursery and growing their own poinsettias. Uh -huh. Rick pointed out that their greenhouses are heated by geothermal energy. Oh yeah, yeah. They get it down. Look at they that. Put pipes. What is that? When you put pipes down in the the earth and then you warm up the air and bring it up. Well, I didn't realize how many hot springs there were around uh, Boise. Yeah. Oh, so that they I just tap into that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's great when you can, and they have plenty of water there. I think the water is virtually free. <laughs> <laughs> it just falls out of the sky, and they just they use just it. They just collect it and use it. Yeah. Well, that's just it is, right? I mean, you know, when those, like, I was so shocked when I travel to places and they don't have irrigation systems. I'm shocked all. when I see people drinking water out of the sink, <laughs> and it tastes wonderful. Sink water. Oh. Well, here in California, we know how bad that is. Yeah. I've. I always drink water out it's got of the good sink. good fluoride. It's good for your teeth. No, it's not good water at all. Come on. Yeah. Did you say fluoride or chloride? <laughs> yeah, both. <laughs> Every, everything, John. Yeah. Right. Got all of them. Um, Where are we now? We, I think that's we, it. we covered them I all. I think we covered them all, right? I think so. Yeah, oh, we've got some stuff. New Year's resolutions. Ooh, all right. Well, my, mine is, as I told you, my resolution is to not make any resolutions. I make resolutions in the middle of the year, June or July. How about that? Hmm. Six months into the year, I decide I'm going to do something. You hate being bound by rules. Exactly. Right. No I'm, rules. I'm a just rebel, right. but I have a cause. Remember that. All right. Uh, Veronica in Spring Valley. Yes. She says that her resolution is to get better at growing her plumerias so they will flower. Oh. They I, are beautiful. I grew plumerias for years without them flowering till. We had someone on the show, and Tiger told me what I needed to do. And it was, uh, what's the name of that fertilizer? Grow more um, Hawaii? Hawaiian bloom or Hawaiian something tropical bloom. bloom? Yeah. So here's a tip Grow for you, more. Veronica. It was but it, Tatiana, who we also have had on the oh, show, they have right. a great fertilizer yes. line as well that you would be able to use for your plumerias as well. So go to toptropicals.com for that yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Toptropicals.com. Yeah, but I think the lesson John learned is that if you want you plumerias to bloom, you do have to fertilize them. They are not one of those right. plants that will just bloom on their own without any kind of help. So you know, and, definitely and need I, to fertilize. I, them. I experimented with what you're saying. The year prior, mm -hmm. fertilized bloom. Last year, did not fertilize, no bloom. It's you, it's I li true. I like how Brian played that off as an experiment. Not as he just <laughs> forgot to fertilize them. Let's say I didn't forget. Let's, let's just say, <laughs> oh, I'm going to not fertilize them and see what happens. Are you going to bloom or not? Yeah. How about if I withhold the fertilizer? Yeah. Are you like that? Yeah, no fertilizer. <laughs> Brian does all this uh, research to find the on each plant he has the permanent wilting point. <laughs> You'd be surprised. In fact, that's my next book. Yeah, how called many the days? Permanent wilting point. <laughs> how many days to the permanent wilting point? <laughs> Which, for our listeners, is the point at which a plant cannot recover. Yeah. Yes. I mean, once. So there's so many days till you hit the. That's right. Yeah. It, it won't recover. It droop, 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 and then you water it, and it doesn't perk back up. Okay. Stop the water. Who is that? You <laughs> dinging? <laughs> everybody's, everybody's wishing him a happy New Year, I guess. Over here. Remember his birthday? His yeah. phone kept going off all show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the same thing. And Tiger's right. Happy New Year's. <laughs> So, but did you hear that little ding? The phone isn't ringing. Is I, I, will, I will say this: it is less obtrusive. Yes, it's yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of pleasant. Tiger, uh, after the show, Tiger will show you how to do that to your phone. <laughs> no, no, I know how to do it. You can choose your ringtone, you can choose your text tone, all that stuff. Uh, I'm gonna get. You know what I'm gonna do to, to annoy you? I'm gonna put on the Lone Ranger theme. Yeah, it's gonna be like some crazy da, 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 long. Da, 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 I like da, da, that. Da, da, da. Hey, um, we did. Veronica's second resolution was to get more dwarf fruit trees. Oh. I was uh, when I was at my daughter's house. We were, I was talking to her about getting some, because uh, she's in a subdivision, 
It doesn't have a huge yard, but it's a nice size. But we were talking about getting colonnade apple trees. Oh, okay. And they're apple trees that only get about two feet wide. Right. And form a column. Oh, very cool. And they're, okay. yeah, great for containers. Really minimal pruning on it. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they do that well in our climate, though. I think they I haven't need, seen them. Yeah, like need a little a, more chili. They need cold. There's a few of what they call, like, the super dwarf nectarine and those ones that yeah. get that two to three feet tall bush shape. But no, not the apple that I've seen. We're going to stay on time for the network for a change and take a break. We have, let's see, two more segments coming up after this one. Uh, those on BizTalk Radio, break coming up, Facebook Live. It's going to be a very quick break. And again, if you have New Year's resolutions, whatever, uh, just like Veronica and the various people this morning, post them right there on Facebook as we take a break and come back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. All righty, here we are, first show of the new year, 2022. We were off for a few weeks, and it didn't feel good. After that first couple of weeks, we had this itch to get back in the studio. We did have uh, plenty of time to spend with our friends and family over the holidays, Christmas, and we do appreciate you being here for the first show of 2022. Hope you enjoyed all the plants we discussed, and uh, now yeah, we talk about the wilting we, point. And before we go to the next um New Year's resolution, resolution. Veronica, it sounds like she needs to really get in touch with Top Tropicals because, you know, when you're talking about fertilizing right. and then dwarf fruit trees, right you know, up their alley. They have, they have quite the selection. Right. Uh, Dell was asking how we manage pots with no holes, and we did touch on that a little. And our mm -hmm. recommendation is never to plant in a pot with no holes, yeah. but to just use it as a container. Right. Uh, you know, so that you can uh, put your plant in and take it out when it needs to be watered. And you know what's actually a really good note for people, too, is because, you know, they don't always make nursery size pots that fit these decorative pots well. But I found packing peanuts are excellent for filler oh, because, good A, they're lightweight. You know, people go, oh, just fill it with gravel. It's like, yeah, but now yeah, you just heavy. made it like 80 pounds. Um, but they're a they're really lightweight. They don't break down, and they allow for the the airflow and the drainage. Because we talked about, you can put a saucer beneath the nursery pot to capture water, and then but b because you know they don't always fit um, a decorative pot well. Um, you can make the you can raise it up. You can move it to the back of the decorative pot. You cover you, the top with moss. You can cover the top with moss, or you can even set other plants if you have room, like Around. a pothos oh, hanging a over idea. the edge of the yeah. pot. So if you're a big fan of indoor house plants, you know, and you're, again, leaving these plants in pots, packing peanuts are really good. Just don't get the biodegradable ones because they will break down. They, will. I mean, they just melt all when, you hit, in. when you hit water. But, I mean, at the same time, outdoors you can do very similar things because they do last even outside. So packing peanuts are my tip of the week. Right. And uh, all our uh, – conservationists out there <laughs> that uh, just heard tiger recommend do not get biodegradable yeah, packing, peanuts. packing peanuts it was only for this particular purpose yeah. yes indoors yeah. right um let's see here gina says she one of her resolutions is to try winter seed sowing for the first time like flower seeds or i just, i don't know i my guess is grass. that and they well up in idaho they do um cover crops too Ooh. you know and then turn them over hmm. but i would i my guess is she would be talking about some either wildflowers or perennials or something like that uh carla says that her resolutions are one to take better care of her roses mm. and it's a good point you never can take too good a care of your roses <laughs> i have um one of that that i think it's a Chrysler Imperial you gave to me. Right. Um, I cut a bloom yesterday off of it and brought it in for Janine. Just a nice real single flower mm -hmm. one. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, I haven't pruned this plant in many, many months. It's all growing all weird shaped now. I'm like, I got to oh, get Oh, you're getting here. to the time to prune it, right? Yeah, Usually, exactly. Usually January we start pruning best. in San Diego. And then here's her other resolution is to visit Mission Hills Nursery. Ooh, love to have you down there. Absolutely. Car yeah. Carla, right? Carla, yeah, yeah. She wants yeah. to drive from Huntington Beach. It's worth the drive, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And 
There's a lot to see around there too. It's a different. As well, so. It's a different kind of nursery oh, too, Carlo. Belboa Park and yeah. places to visit. It's uh, quaint. Yeah. I can't, you can't say that about a lot of nurseries. Go. One of the best times to go is April. So before the May madness, you know, we're fully stocked in April. It's looking pretty cool. And Rick has got a, Rick also in Idaho, in Star Idaho, has a hillside that he wants to figure out how to landscape for this year. Mm. And uh, he just got a big bag of wildflowers from American That's Meadows. Right. So he'll probably throw that mm, out. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know, you know, in California, we started throwing out that seed in November, right? Yep. Like poppies and things. Yep. And I've noticed some of mine coming up from seed that naturally sowed right. last year. It's just now coming up for you? Just coming up, yeah. Oh, really? The poppies. Mine are about to start blooming. Really? Yeah. You're a little warmer. Yeah. And then uh, the gazanias are coming up everywhere. Oh, that was in your mix, too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't have gazanias. Yeah, I'm uh, not a huge I, fan of the gazania. On my, I, I, I've heard they attract gophers. Really? Yeah. Do you know what attracted a gopher? Now, either a gopher or a squirrel. I'm not sure which. But we, um, when my before my son moved, they had planted squash, mm -hmm. and we had um, Marina uh, di Chiogia, which is the. <laughs> and you think his memory's gone? Yeah. It's the winter squash that they use in Italy, and it's the one that they they bake and they actually sell slices of it from uh, street vendors. Oh. So we had one out there that was uh, huge, like about almost the size of a pumpkin. And I told my wife, I said, you know, we do have that one winter squash out there that we need to pick. And uh, yesterday we took a little walk down, walked in front of the chicken coop. She said, didn't you say there was a squash down here? And I go, yeah, that one right over there. And she said, oh, well, pick it and let's bring it up to the house. So I go, turn it over. There was a hole in the ground under the squash where something had come up and out of the eat, ground out of the ground and eaten the hole inside well it oh. had to be a gopher if it came from underground no well it could be a, ground a squirrel, squirrel. Yeah. There? oh yeah but, but I, I love that you looked at it from the top. It looked, know, it looked like this perfect squash. Absolutely and it perfect. And just hollow shell of a squash. Yeah. It was so disheartening. <laughs> oh, that is sad. I it mean, it, it was a perfect squash, too. And, you know, winter squash will last for up to a year easily. Well, you didn't take a picture of it and put it in the newsletter, did you? No, yes. but I could do that. You could because it's still there. I just I left that. in disgust. <laughs> Why don't you take a picture of it the way it looks, and then turn it over and take a picture of the hole? And that was the only squash that you got off of that plant. Uh, there was another one that something had come out of the ground uh, about a month earlier and eaten it from the top. It's like a bad B movie. I never something thought came out of the ground. It would sneak underneath came under, yeah. out of the ground i think you know what it might have been was one of those worms from dune oh gosh because <laughs> <laughs> that's how much of it was missing god oh that's funny um i'm trying to think like i found definitely squash like that where you you walk out there you look at it and you're like it was oh this is decimated? so cool and then you turn it over and it's either rotted or it's eaten from the other, the other mm. side, yeah, not fun. Uh, Veronica mentioned that she does have apple trees, and she says hers were developed in Israel, and she's mentioning Anna and Ein Shemer. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, I think she's talking about Ein Shemer, um, but those two usually have two or three crops in San Diego. Anna's and, a good one, yeah. Yeah, extremely low chill. And they'll have fruit and flowers at the same time because mm -hmm. they, they need virtually no chilling at all. And there's a lot of probably dozens of apple tree varieties that will grow really well in San Diego. Uh, we've had Tom Spellman on before, mm -hmm. and Tom said that there were apple trees that he's tried at his home that weren't supposed to grow here right. and did really well. They just don't need as much chill? or Yeah. Well, they don't need as much chill as people thought they did. And now I will say with the apples, um, you know, where you live, John, you can get some apples with some good size because they do get good chill there. Right. You know? But as you move to the coast, you get apples, 
but they're usually a smaller apple, the size. And that's the thing. People people get this, like, oh, grocery store, I'm going to get this apple this big. Or uh, the other thing is broccoli. I'm going to grow broccoli, and it's going to have this big head. It's like, no, if your broccoli is, you know, the size of your fist, that's a good one. You know, don't look for the uh, head-sized broccoli that you find at the grocery store because – in Southern California, we don't have those. Yeah, I'm going to pick the apple off my tree, and it's going to be shiny. Yeah. Just like oh, gosh, the waxy produce. Cody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it's going to be shiny. So funny, yeah. Did they change that shiny stuff? That Wasn't that uh, uh, no-no for a while? What was that called? Alar? Or the coating that yeah, they put on the Yeah, they owls? started using, like, a wax, like a beeswax or something now. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Lisa oh. says that she had a variegated pumpkin from 2020 that still on her was still on her porch. Awesome for Christmas. Beautiful. Nice. If you don't break it, if it doesn't rot, it'll last. My uh, my wife planted up the succulents on the pumpkins. Right. And they're still perfect. They're out by the trash can, but they look just like the day that she potted them up. She didn't pot them. She glued them to the to top. To the top. Right. Yeah. Hey, we're going to take a break. We've got one right. more segment coming up. Ooh, this is our last, last break. Last one. One more segment coming up for the first day of 2022. Do stay with us. Thank you for joining us, whether it's Biz Talk Radio or those of you right now looking at us or listening to us on Facebook Live. I'm Brian Maine, Target Palafox, John Bagnasco, back after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. All righty, this is it. Final segment, first day of the new year, 2022. Those that have joined us and continue to join us on Biz Talk Radio Facebook Live, we thank you for your support. Once again, please go to our YouTube channel, like and subscribe. It is Garden America Radio. All the past shows are right there. This show should be posted today, before the end of the day. You can uh, fast forward, rewind, pause, and uh, just enjoy the shows. All the shows also are archived on our Facebook page. And uh, while you're at it, go to our uh, website. GardenAmerica.com. But remember to like and subscribe so we can continue to grow our YouTube channel. All right. A couple more. Yeah, a few more, right? Um, I like Harry's resolution is That's, to uh, uh, li um, Lila. 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 Um, finish the native garden and succulent garden in the front yard and put up trellises for the roses. Just, you know, doing a lot of stuff around the um, garden. You know, it's always nice to have those goals, those tasks that you want to accomplish through the year. And Give yourself some time. Don't rush it. Here, here's my one of my immediate goals. Once the weather clears up and we have at least two or three days of sunshine, clean my patio. And the fountain, you know, I drained all the water and cleaned yeah. it prior to the storm. It's all full of dirty full water of dirty now, and it's just dirty leaves. back there. Yeah. So that's one of my immediate resolutions. Yeah. You like the sound of the water? Oh, yeah. For the fountain? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the reason I ask is that I've seen a lot of people that got tired of cleaning the fountains. And they planted them with succulents, and they look they look awesome. Now we, yeah. you know what? I enjoy the maintenance on it. And, yeah, and he's got a fish tank. And and Same yeah, thing. exactly. And I tell you what, the two, the two things I use to clean it, the, the Mister Clean pads. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cleans it right up. And then as one of our listeners or viewers suggested, which does work, the hydrogen peroxide. Right. No algae whatsoever. Nice. That's it. Low maintenance. Uh, you didn't finish uh, Lila's oh, no? statement there, but she said that she's also going to build an arbor for her oh, yeah. cup of gold vine. Yeah. You better which... build it out of steel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it is a, a big vine, but you don't see those very often anymore. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, they are massive vines that need structures, you know, that can well, that's hold true. them up. That's true. Like They're... houses. <laughs> but they attract your attention in the garden, right? Have you ever seen it when, I, I mean, I've gone on a lot of home tours, uh -huh. and sometimes people will have that growing on the, on their actual home. And these flowers, Brian, are massive gold flowers that are lots like of color. Tub tubular gold flowers, just right. striking, just striking. And they're growing and, on the house itself. Yeah. Well, the vine is like a tree. Um, and Very so, thick stems, yeah. And super cool plants. Um, but in, you know, to what we're talking about, if she's going to grow it on an arbor, 
you know, it can't be like the little like arbor you get from a garden center that's made out of like, you know, one by one wood. It's got to be something that's substantial in in size. So um, I can understand why I, that, the... I can understand why that's going to be a project, not just like a little like weekend task. <laughs> Couldn't you treat it like a strangler fig, though? It needs <laughs> just, a little support and, and it'll step, and eventually stem on just itself. takes over. Yeah, it's they do get a itself. they do get a rigid stem. But the other issue is, is that their new growth. Again, they grow so quickly that it gets so heavy that even the the plant itself, if it's going horizontally, can't support it. It's not so much the vertical, it's the horizontal growth. That's where you people run into problems with it. Hey, what, it what is your weight. opinion on uh, tree services who take Arbor Day off? Do you think that's <laughs> a proper thing to do? I mean, yeah, it's their well, holiday, Christians right? Christians take Christmas off. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. So, yeah. I just want to run that by you. Yeah. Same type of thing, right? right. Absolutely. Um. And then you we got have another a, resolution. I was going to say you got a ditto from John on the packing peanuts. Oh, nice. Thank yeah, that packing peanut thing is uh He says he's popular. had some for 10 years. See? In there you go. Pots. Uh, Kevin, plants I cannot recommend are euphorbia uh, or pencil cactus and evasive horse hound ferns. Whorehound. Whorehound ferns. Um, I can't think, get rid of them out of control in the ground. Yeah, I think he's, uh, I think he's talking about equisetum, right? That's what it. I horsetail. Horsetail, right? Is that yeah? Yeah, because horehound is uh, marubium, which is a an herb, herbaceous plant, right? Yeah, but maybe I don't know. Maybe where's that? But but anyway, the, you you cannot get rid of horsetail. Yeah, yeah, you can't get rid of horsetail, and then you know, definitely, I think. Equisetums are one of those plants that, I don't know, I mean, I haven't had a problem working with it, knock on wood, um, that, you know, I prune it, I do whatever, and I seem to be okay. But I do have a staff member that has a severe allergic reaction whenever he works with it. Just simply with equisetum? With, or not with equisetum, the, the um, euphorbia. Sorry. Oh, the fire euphorbia, sticks. The fire stick. Right. A severe um, allergy to it that whenever he even, like, right. touches the plant. He gets red. It's like and poison oak. Right? Wow. Exactly. So, um, yeah. um, I don't have problems with them. I think you got to right. kind of play it, you know, person by person with that, um, right? Euphorbia. Um, but it is a good plant for. It looks really cool. You know? Do you know on the equisetum, the horsetail, um, a plant I tried to get for maybe twenty years and finally gave up was the giant horsetail, which is a tropical plant and gets mm. to be about. I think about ten feet tall. Really? And the base is, you know, probably about like a baseball four. bat. Yeah, something like that. Really? Because so I've only seen the find dwarf. One, let me know. I've only I've only seen the dwarf varieties. Like, you know what I mean? They right. You know, they, I've never seen somebody that's tried to got it get it larger. I've only seen the dwarf ones. Um, I love equisetum. You know, I don't like when people trim it flat though. I like it to be left more natural. You know, that flat hedge trim, not a big fan. I've seen them grown in uh, contained areas, and they look kind of cool where yes. they're not going to. It's like Bermuda grass, you know. <laughs> it's like <laughs> tall Bermuda grass yeah. if you don't contain it. Yeah. Okay, guys, we've got just about a minute. Oh, uh, man. Tiger, John, uh, not a bad show. Some good response today. We did yeah. something a little bit different to open Happy up the New year. year. Now, no, next I mean, week, our yeah, guest people. is uh, Tiger. Uh, wait one sec. I was looking at you, John, to fill the dead air. Oh, Mark, I, I thought no, I'll, wait, I'll, we I got it in. To talk. Mark Javier with um, the uh, Plants Without Borders um, oh, okay. was a real cool thing where we're going to be talking with Mark Javier. connects us with um, regional people that grow their plants. Like we were talking about this philodendron, wherever it's native to, it actually grows well. We were right. talking about how you know they can grow these plants well wherever they're native to and then try to get them into parts of the world where they will sell them and be successful in selling them. Perfect. I also wanted, I don't know if I have time to mention Quickly, this. Quickly, quick. Okay, but in the newsletter, I put a link to the book, The Plant Hunter, by Cassandra Quave. Okay. And uh, I, I got an email from Patty in San Marcos who said she read that book and uh, highly recommends it. And I would recommend before Dr. Quave's on her show that you read the book so you can ask her some questions too. 
Okay. It's right. it's amazing. Well worth your time. You're giving out homework. All right. For the entire crew, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco, and Brian Maim, thank you for being with us first day of 2022. We'll do it again next week. Have a have a safe day. Have a safe weekend. We'll do it again next week, as I mentioned, right here on Garden America. Take care.